Patrick Jones from Patrick Jones Baseball, um, and the very first guest of the uh, morning show, the Foul Pole to Foul Pole Morning Show. So, man, thank you for joining me today. It's, a, it's an honor to have you on. Tyler, I, I appreciate it, man. It's an honor to be here. I, uh, I, you know, we just recorded an episode together for for my podcast, which will be coming out next Monday. So excited for that one, and excited to be on your show now too. Yeah, we just we finished that up. I, it it was fun for me, and uh, I can't wait to to dive into that one and just listen to it again because when I when I hear you talk, um, it it gets me thinking about, about different things and and getting your perspective on stuff. And a lot of our opinions are, are the same, and then sometimes we differ, but that's what makes us better, and makes us learn. Uh, you were talking about the approach and um, trying to help athletes with that mental approach. So, kind of tell me and the audience here. What's the, the main disconnect when you talk to young athletes about the approach and how they build their approach? I think the, the biggest disconnect is, is there, there is no emphasis on having an approach to the plate or a plan at the plate. Mm -hmm. I, I think we have become so obsessed with mechanics. And I think a big part of that is because you can't visually see someone's approach, right? You can't see what they're thinking but you can see their mechanics. And so it's easy to be able to diagnose someone's mechanics, right. but it's, it's a little bit harder to be able to see why well, I, I don't, I don't, you know, I know exactly what their approach is right here. What you don't exactly know. But so I think it's, it's very important as coaches to start teaching them at a younger age and start planting those seeds for getting them to understand their own swing, getting them to understand right. what, what they should be trying to do when they're in practice in the cage. And eventually it's it, you know that transformed into their approach during the during an actual game and so it allows them to to, to have have a, you know an actual plan so they're not just going up there just swinging just to swing and so it, but more than anything else it's going to help their production out like they're 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 going to be able to handle better pitchers consistently because they have an approach and they're not going up there and just trying to see ball hit ball which may work at lower levels of competition but Tyler, I think we both know, having seen the the level of, of pitchers at the the college softball level and even for professional level, it just doesn't work when you get to that level. If you try to cover the entire zone, you end up covering nothing. Yeah, I was um, this weekend, actually yesterday, I had a, a small mini clinic, and one of the first things that um, I was talking to the girls when we started swinging um, was, I want you to have a pitch in your mind. And I want you to have that pitch location. If it's not that pitch location that you want, I want you to act like you're ahead in the count and you're not trying to cover the whole plate. You're just wanting to pick out your pitch and hit it. Be aggressive on your pitch. Don't be aggressive for every pitch. Be aggressive on your pitch. Uh, that's just like one way, one element um, that I kind of help them with their approach. Now, when you break down approach for, for your athletes, how do you go about, you, you got a brand new athlete, um, and you're, you're teaching kind of like pitch selection, like what you're, what they should be looking for, what they want to hit. How do you kind of break it down for them uh, and, and at least start a foundation? So I, there's three questions that I will first ask myself about the hitter. It, and it's, uh, it's what, why, and how. So what's the lowest hanging fruit? What's the one thing if they improve upon, it'll take their game to the next level. Why is that the case? And then lastly, the how. How are we going to help them get there? And so once I understand what that lowest hanging fruit is, you know, the what and the why, which a lot of times is pretty easy to understand, then it's then it becomes the how. And so mm -hmm. I view my, myself, and I stole this from a, 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 another coach. You know, I had him on, on the podcast a while ago, but I view myself more as an interviewer than I do a coach. And so the reason why is, if I tell a hitter exactly what to do, it doesn't come from them, and so it may not stick as easy. But mm -hmm. if they feel like it comes from them, it's their idea, right? It's more likely to stick. And so it's important for me to ask very good questions and to uh, you know, listen to them. And so they feel like because of those questions, they're answering them themselves. And so it becomes their own approach and so they own it now. Instead right. of me telling it to them, they own it now. So I would say okay. for me, the, the majority of the time, Tyler, especially with high school high school hitters and even a little bit younger, uh, the biggest thing that I see is players e either you know jumping out hard on that front side or some would call it lunging at the ball or the, they fly open too early. 
And so I think it's important it, to have a foundation. I think you need to be able to, to learn how to hit to all fields first. Right. You see this a little bit even in baseball where there's an obsession with pulling the ball and hitting home runs and things like that. And I think that's awesome. But what we're not talking about is those are, are grown adults who have been hitting for 20 years, 15 yeah. years. So they know their swing so incredibly well. They've already checked off all the boxes of being able to hit to all fields. So, of course, since they, they know how to hit to all fields, they know how their body moves and everything. Now their approach is maybe pulling the ball more, but they, that's because they've learned how to do everything else first. Right. Nobody talks about that. So we have to check those boxes first. So teaching them to hit to the opposite field and to, to do it correctly is something that, you know, I hate to cookie cut it like that, but it, it's something that for pretty much every hitter that I work with, it's something that, that we do focus on. Just because I, I see so many kids jumping out hard on their front side or, or flying open early, and a big part of that is a, a lack of, a, of approach of, of anything. It's just seeing the ball and trying to hit it as hard as you can and, and pull it which causes bad movement, as we know. But I would say the first thing is just starting out getting them to understand and getting them to be able to hit the ball consistently with with power to the opposite field and then view it as you have to you're earning the right to pull the ball. Yeah, I that's a good point. man. I I see it myself and other coaches uh, that it's almost like we'll take a hitter. Once they figure something out, we jump on the next thing and we go to the next thing as soon as we can. So once we get a little bit of consistency with their swing or with contact, we're like, okay, now, so let's start hitting inside pitches. This is what we should do. Okay, let's. this is what we're doing if we're getting something down and away and it's, it's a strike, we got to go for it because we got to. We, we start to complicate it for them. Man, if we just tell a kid to go up here and swing and, and do your thing and we can build a, a fundamentally sound swing that they can get comfortable with, it goes a lot further than trying to add all these other different elements to the swing that they're just not ready for. And it doesn't matter if they're 10 or 12 or, or 16 yet. It just depends on whether it de developmentally. So, you know, it, in your experience with that, um, when you're when you're talking and it doesn't matter the age of the kid how many times have you had to like stop yourself and go whoa hey let's just hang out right here let this athlete get comfortable let them build some confidence right there and let them have this feel you know of what they're seeing i i think i have that conversation with myself every day <laughs> i think i think as a, a big part of it the, the one of the things that I've I've learned uh, the more I, I've coached over the years and the more hitters that I've worked with is just patience and it's 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 very hard especially in this era of of having to be very you know really good right now but you can't rush development you can't force development upon somebody and so I, I think it's it's also educating the parents on that too where uh, you, you know just because someone has a bad weekend doesn't mean we have to go back to the drawing board and start doing everything different again right that's it's normal it's it, like that's it's a good thing it's it, that's part of the development process yeah um i'll give you an, i'll give you an example tyler so last year when i was i was coach for the baltimore orioles in their organization last year and i had the number one prospect right he's right now the number one prospect in all of major league baseball his name's Gunnar henderson mm -hmm. and i had him last year when i was in um, when i was with the orioles in single a and low a when he got promoted to high a he started out i think it was 0 for 32 so he's the number one prospect in all of major league baseball he was 0 for 32 <laughs> last year and in, in a ball in single a right he's in the big leagues now a, a, a year later and so imagine if if he would have just completely revamped everything you know and hit the panic button and went back to just i mean he he may not have he may not be who he is right now right. so a big part of it is we just have to understand what we're trying to get these players to do i don't care if it's hitting a softball or baseball whatever it is hitting a ball coming at you is the hardest thing to do in all the sports so we have to be patient you have to you have to trust it and I know that's it's hard. It's not easy because we want that instant feedback, that instant gratification right away. But this is where it just comes into, you know, you put in the work and you have to trust the work that you're putting in. And if, if you do that over the long haul, it'll pay off. 
Um, but if you, you know, after every weekend, you're starting to uh, think about overthink every single little thing, it's going to be a roller coaster ride, man. Yeah. I, you know, I think about those athletes that have that, that summer schedule, the, the national level schedule, where it's like six, eight weeks, and they could either have the best time of their life or for whatever reason, they just didn't have a good couple of weeks. And then imagine that feeling that little girl has now. She thinks she's she's blown her shot. Like, I'll never get this back. But what she doesn't realize is coaches understand that too. This is just a three-week clip on this long journey. So how do you help athletes when they come to you and say, or you've been working with them, and it doesn't matter the level. I mean, professional athletes, how do you help them kind of, let's just get back to, to what we are. Let's not change anything. Let's Let's figure this thing out. Yeah, it's I think it's defining what like what is success in hitting is okay. is is it solely getting hits? Is it hitting the ball? Hard? Like, what is it? And so I, I think too many times if you're chasing statistics and I get game changer and all that stuff, I think game changer, for example, it's a great tool. But I got to be honest with you, Tyler, I don't care what any 15 year olds <laughs> batting average is. Is 500 real good? Is 300 good? I have no idea. And I, I get people who tell me this all the time, so-and-so sitting 550 or four. I don't know if that's good or not. And, and the thing is, I really don't care because it's right. there's so many nuances that go into that, you know, defense, competition, everything. And no college coach really, I'll be honest, cares a ton about that stuff either. So for me, it's like, okay, I don't want the hitters that I, I work with and be, to be results-driven right where they're just number they're just it's all about getting hits and the statistics and everything i don't want that because i know that they will get better statistics if they don't focus on that yeah if they focus on being process oriented and so what i would recommend to people out there is who are listening to this players coaches parents is whoever your you know your daughter is Let's just focus on the one to two things that they can control every single at bat. Mm -hmm. And then their success is is determined on whether they did those one or two things that at bat. Right. It's not results driven. It's not did they get a hit or not. <laughs> right. It, maybe it's did they swing at a pitch they can drive. Right. Or, you know, right. that's controllable. You can't always control what what happens after, you know, you actually decide to swing. You can control if you swung at your pitch. You can control if you were on time or not, right? right? It's it's things like that that are more process driven than being results oriented. So when I work with players who are starting to struggle, that's what we get back to more than anything else. And it, it takes all the pressure and stress off of them. Mm -hmm. The first off, which is a big part of, of continuing to struggle is you just, you know, you start to feel everyone's paying attention to you and you know counting on you and this and that. And I think the, the thing, the funny thing of it at Tyler is nobody's actually paying that much attention to you as much as you are. <laughs> and that's the thing that's in that crazy. Right. Like if you go 0 for 10 and you acted like nothing was wrong and that you were playing great or whatnot, I bet you nobody would really outside of you and maybe your family, nobody would really know that you were 0 for 10, right? right? They, right. owe you, right. they know you're 0 for 10 because now you're, you know, your face is all down and you're walking, you know, you know, shoulders shrugged, everything like that. That's why they know. Yeah. But it but so I think it's understanding that and then also being process oriented, too. So I hate using the word fake it till you make it. And I don't really <laughs> necessarily believe in that. But a part of it is, is just not not letting the results of, of how how you do during the actual game affect, you know, what what you view as success at the plate.